guys, it's Milmi here with another iPhone graphics tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be teaching how to set a custom back button um, or a custom navigation bar button uh, image to your uh, application. Um, again, all the graphics in these tutorials are made by Jan Martin. You can check out his channel there. Um, and he teaches you how to make all the graphics in these tutorials as well. So go, go check out his channel, go watch the videos and learn how to create them. Um, so on with the tutorial, uh, we need two images, one's going to be the normal image and the other's going to be the uh, retina image. Again, it doesn't matter what these images are called as we're just going to declare them in code anyway. Um, so it doesn't matter what they're called, uh, this one's called back button and this one's back button at 2x. Now the size of these back buttons don't really matter, the only thing that matters is they have to be, well the normal one anyway, the normal size, has to be at least under 44 pixels in height because as you recall from the last tutorial a navigation bar is 44 pixels in height so if you have an image that's over 44 pixels in height then obviously the navigation it's going to overlap the navigation bar and look rubbish and also you don't want it to equal exactly 44 pixels otherwise it will fill the entire navigation bar and look a bit stupid as well so this image here is it looks pixelated but that's just because it's automatically uh, sized bigger the normal size is the normal size is actually uh, 64 pixels long by 40 pixels high um, so that's the size of my normal back button image and the retina image at 2x as you can see it looks a bit nicer because it's retina is double that at 128 long and 80 high um, so they're the sizes of my images but it, again it doesn't matter what yours are as long as their height is um, below 44 and their length isn't stupidly long because if their length is really long then the button's going to cover the entire navigation bar so there you go so now we can open up our table view app and drag this down close that and drag our buttons in I'm going to put them in the supporting files here copying them is always a great thing because if I accidentally delete these ones then I have a copy of them in my file or my project even um, seeing as this here guys is looking a bit busy with all my icons I'm gonna go over here and right click and create a new group and I'm gonna name this group um, table view graphics and in here I'm gonna put all the graphics to do with my table view so I'm gonna select them all and drag them into the file uh, into the folder there and as you can see we now have a folder full of all of our table view graphics um, so with this tutorial guys what we're actually going to do is create a, create a UI button and put it over the top of the navigation bar to make it look like it's part of the navigation bar when in fact it's just a button that's sitting pretending to be a part of the navigation bar and that's how it's done most of the time to create a custom one as you can only set the tint color of an actual bar button item so again we don't need anything in the root view controller because that doesn't have a back button but in the pets table view controller and the pets detail view controller we do need one so we need two things we need to create a button which will be done completely via code so we don't need to go into interface builder and we also need an action for that button and I'm going to create that action now which is going to be called back so void and back that's what I'm going to call it I'm going to go into the dot m here and I'm going to go under my view did load, it doesn't matter where you put it, and put in my back button uh, code here. And it's very simple, just one line of code, and it's going to be self.navigation controller pop view controller animated yes. Um, so let me go over that. Basically, this back, back method will get called when our custom back button gets pressed, which we'll make in a minute. And what it does is it basically uses the navigation controller we have and uses its method called pop view controller. That basically means it will get rid of the first view controller on its view, uh, on its stack, and pop it away or get rid of it basically. Um, and we want it to be animated yes. Um, so basically, that basically means go back one level. So that's why it's going to be a back button. Uh, so that's that, very simple. Um, and now I'm going to go into my view did load and set up my back button. Uh, it doesn't matter where you put it in the view did load, but I'm going to put it underneath where I set the background image. So I'll be back in a minute once I've typed all this out.
Okay guys, I'm back, and as you can see I've added quite a lot of code here into the VD load, but I'm going to go through it with you. First I create a, a UI image, which is going to hold our back button, oops, our back button image that we entered. Um, and that's for ease, uh, that's just for ease of putting it into the parameters later so we don't have to keep repeating ourselves. So that's why we make an image there. As you can see, I've also have a commented out line here. And that is holding what's going to be theori uh, theoretically called a highlighted back image. And I'm just showing you this is so that if you have a highlighted image, and a highlighted image, guys, is when the user presses the button and it becomes active as such, and it will show a different image. So if you want it to be black when it's not pressed and white when it is pressed, then you create two different images, one to be highlighted, one not to be highlighted. So that's just there. I don't have a highlighted image, but that's there to let you guys know that you can do that. Next, we create a UI button, and it's going to be a UI button with type custom rather than rounded rect because we want it to be custom so it doesn't have any borders on it so we can com completely customize it. Next, we set the size of the button using uh, button.bounds, um, and because this um, button is going to be added to our navigation bar as a view. We don't need to set its x and y coordinates so we can leave them nil or zero and we want the back button size to be the same size as our image. So normal back image dot size dot width is what we're going to set as our width and the normal back image dot size dot height. So basically we're saying this back button equals the same size as our image. Then we set the back button's image and we do that by going back button set image and then we call up our normal back image that we set earlier up here and we set the UI control state normal and that's basically saying when it's not activated when it's just sitting there that's when I want you to show that image again there's another commented out line here saying that when they press the button with UI control state highlighted you set the image to the highlighted image that we created up here theoretically um, Again, uh, but I mean again, uh, the last bit we need to do now is set the actual selector or the action that the button will go to. So we do that by going add target self action selector back. So we go to the back action that we set down here. And UI control events, and this is going to be touch up inside. So UI control event touch up inside. Last thing we do now is create a bar button item. And this is an item that will sit on the navigation bar. And we say UI bar button item alloc uh, and init with custom view back button or the button we just made. So now we're actually creating a bar button that will hold the back button as a view. And then we say self.navigation item, not navigation controller, navigation item dot left bar button item. So this is now the bar button item that's on the left of the screen, that's normally the back button. We're now saying that that back button is now going to equal the button item we set up here. And because we allocked, or allocated and initiated this bar back button item, we need to release it down here. So with all that explaining out of the way, uh, we can now build and run and hopefully see our back button work. And remember, we don't need to go into interface builder because we set this up completely via code. So we can hopefully build and run and see our back button working. So we click push here and as you can see we now have a back button up the top there and press it and it goes back just like we expected. So now you see we can have a custom back button which I think is really neat. Um, as you'll notice the detail view does not have a back button um, does not have a back button yet but I'll just set that and I'll be back in a minute when I've done that. Okay guys I'm back and all I literally did was copy and paste the code into my pets detail view controller and now you can see that our detail view has a nice back button to it as well. So there you go guys, that's how you add a custom back button or custom navigation button for that map fa uh, for that fact. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a back button, it can be a settings button or something like that. Um, so there you go guys, that's how you create that. So thanks for watching. Um, I think that concludes our last tutorial on the iPhone graphics for now. Uh, undoubtedly there will be more but for now that's it so thanks for watching don't forget to follow me on Twitter to catch all the latest updates don't forget to click on some of the adverts in my tutorials because they also help 
and uh, don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. So thanks again and see you in my next tutorial.